and welcome to the book bunch my name is sam it is so great to have you guys here today to watch this video please like and subscribe it really does help me out and it means that you get notified when i upload more videos so i hope you enjoy this one today we are going to be talking about three allegorical books christian books that you might have heard of might not have heard of and we'll just go through each one and I'll tell you what my thoughts were. So I hope you enjoy this video. The first book that we're going to talk about today is The Pilgrim's Progress. So this is a book that was, used to be at least, very famous. It was very well known. Every household had a copy kind of situation. Um, it was written in the 1600s, so it is quite old. And it was a big deal for people who had strong religious backgrounds um, around that time and afterwards. I know that like my grandparents and all of that know all about this. They all had to read it, that kind of thing. But over the last few generations, it has kind of slipped into the back of everybody's minds and it's no longer at the forefront. It's still referenced here and there, but that's all you really hear about it nowadays. So we're just going to talk about it briefly. I got the original version. So it is all written in John Bunyan's um, old English style writing, which does make it quite difficult to read. Um, it was good though. It just took a bit of time to read because I'd have to sometimes reread some of the sentences and everything just so that it made a bit of sense. Um, it basically follows a man and his name is Christian and he sets out on this journey to find the basically the gates of heaven and he encounters along the way different people or characters from his life and from our lives I guess that he has to either battle with or he has to well, doesn't have to, but he decides to go along on his journey with. So there, everyone is referenced by their characteristic rather than like an actual name. So like you would be named jealousy or envy or hope or faith or something like that, rather than having an actual name, which is why his name is Christian and he is the pilgrim. And yeah, it's really interesting set up because at the start John Bunyan says that like this is a dream essentially and these are the things that he saw and it very strongly follows the biblical journey um, of how we are told like our lives will go um, and what being a pilgrim is like so it is heavily laden with bible verses and different things along the way so that you know where he's quoting from, what part of the journey it is, all of that kind of thing. And yeah, I didn't mind it. I'd give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars, um, only because it was very difficult to read. It does, though, make me want to pick up the children's version, because someone has rewritten this story so that it's more child-friendly, and it's a bit more of a story rather than an allegory if that makes sense like it's they've made it a bit more like Narnia or Lord of the Rings kind of thing than just straight up <laughs> allegory um like this is but it was very good I do recommend it if you are someone who likes Christian literature but yeah just keep in mind that it is very old English I also have The Great Divorce by C.S. Lewis I hadn't heard of this book before until I saw it on Kuron's website and I was like oh I didn't know he wrote this book. Um, I know quite a few of his books and I've read quite a few but I had never heard of this one of his before. So this is about this man or figure I guess that is on a bus and he has left the town of hell and he is on his way essentially like a day trip to heaven or as close to heaven as they can get and everything is a bit weird because like when they arrive there's no set time that they have to leave but people are choosing to leave and 
there are the spirits floating around that are good spirits. So I think they're meant to be kind of representations of angels or something like that. And then there is also everything in this land that they're in is all like hard and you can't pick it up, you can't move it, things are sharp, like walking on the grass isn't very pleasant because it's all sharp and walking on water is kind of nice because it's like soft but hard at the same time, like you can't fall through the water because it's made out of something hard but it's like smooth, that's the word, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, yeah, but they, like the bright spirits tell everyone like, oh, if you stay, like you'll get used to it so that like you will be able to eat the fruits and like drink the water and everything won't be so hard for you. Um, and you won't be so transparent because they're like transparent and they're called ghosts and different things. And it was really interesting because he was basically having different like each chapter he's having a different conversation with somebody um, to, f and you kind of get a glimpse as to why they're in hell and their thoughts and different things. And this is essentially C.S. Lewis's attempt to show that there will be no hell in heaven and no heaven in hell, um, which is a very interesting concept I hadn't thought of before. Um, but this one is a bit weird to read. I didn't overly enjoy it, so I'd only give it a two out of five stars. That's not saying that you won't enjoy it or anything. It just wasn't my taste because it's written differently to some of his other books, which I really enjoy. And majority of his books I love, but the way he wrote this one was a bit too theological and philosophical, I guess, for me. Um, I'm not a very philosophical person. <laughs> I don't like to think about all the questions of the universe and things because I know that like I don't need to know those things and God will show me when I'm ready and if that's in heaven that's fine. But yeah, some people like to break that kind of stuff down and ponder those questions and see if they can find an answer. Um, and that's what this kind of book is like. So if you like that kind of thing, this would be more of your cup of tea than mine. But yeah, that's what this is about. And then finally, I read The Dragon Seed. This book is an allegory. Again, basically showing that the fall that Satan went through um, when he decided that he wanted to be better than God and all of that kind of, the bad, like all the evil that came from that and how that has affected us and how we as Christians need to be on our best spiritual guard against Satan and his demons and what they, the evil they want to spew. So the dragon seed is essentially all of like Satan and his demons are called dragons in this um, allegory and he basically spews dragon seed on people so it's like his poison um, but they work the same way as seeds because I'm assuming the author took a lot of um, inspiration from the Bible when it came to the seed concept because that is something that's biblical like with the um, farmer who put seeds on the path and the thorns and the field and all of that kind of idea so it's similar but yeah you get what I'm saying <laughs> um, yeah so he's used dragon seed and if you give in to that the seed will take root and it can like take over your life and all of that kind of thing and it is interesting because it cuts between this allegory and this family and their kind of family tension and situation that they're going through which is a very ordinary situation that families go through it's not a good situation but it is an ordinary one where the son is 
very, being very disrespectful to his mum and he's a teenager and he just wants to do his own thing and there's a teenage daughter who is very bright but she is very prideful and all that kind of thing and this mum is kind of wrestling with how she can raise her kids and have them love God and how they how yeah she can reunite the family so that it's not such a mess all the time and yeah that's a very normal situation that families encounter and basically this mum gives the son a book that is passed down from generation to generation which is what they claim to be a um novel written by one of their great great ancestors who was around when Jesus was around and kind of his journey through faith and everything and how it teaches us to be on guard against the dragon seed and how we shouldn't let any of it sprout and if it does sprout to yank it out straight away rather than letting it fester and grow deeper and it was a very interesting concept I loved the concept um I just don't know if I love the execution fully. It wasn't bad, it's just not the best that I've ever read. Um, so I would still give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. That's not a bad rating by the way. I just, yeah, need to be very clear about the difference between my ratings. But yeah, 3.5 still means that it's good and I still recommend it. It's just not right up there with some of the other books that I've read but that is what the dragon seed is about I do really like this cover I think it's kind of cool as well but yeah I hope you enjoyed this one I know it was probably a bit self-paced and a bit weird I don't know I just feel like this one might be a little bit weird but I hope you enjoyed it anyway and you got something out of it and let me know if you're going to read any of those books in the comments below or if you have read any of those books I'd always love to have your thoughts and recommendations of what to read next and what you'd like to see from me. So let me know and I hope that you guys have a great week. Bye!